Math 3, Unit 1, Section 3, Part 2. Um, so this is the back side of the notes. These instructions here say find and simplify f of x plus g of x and then sketch that result, basically. They're saying sketch them once you add them. So f of x plus g of x, all we're going to do is add these together. So we're going to write this out. 3 minus x squared minus x cubed because that is f of x. Okay, so I just substituted in and wrote that out. Plus g of x, and g of x is right here. Okay, so we have x to the third minus x, parentheses, 5 minus x. And then all we're going to do is simplify. Order of operations, though, we need to get rid of this parenthesis first. Okay? And so how I do that is we take, this is actually a negative x, and we're going to distribute it through. So negative x times 5 is negative 5x, and negative x times negative x is a positive x squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the rest of this. So I just brought everything else down and I just distributed that through. If at any point you're not sure about something, please stop, ask me. Okay, so now we're gonna do is simplify. We're just gonna combine like terms. When you are combining like terms, it's best to go in descending order. Does anybody remember what descending order means? So it's where you start with like your highest exponent and then go with your and go all the way down to your lowest exponent. So in this problem, my highest exponent is x cubed. So when you go through and look at the x cubed, what ends up happening with each of those? Very good, they cancel out. Okay, so then next I go with my x squared. And what happens with both of those? They also cancel out. Okay? So then next, you would go with just your plain x's. And so I have a negative 5x, but nothing matches it. So that means I have negative 5x. And then we have a positive 3. So this right here, this is the answer to these. Right? That's the answer. f of x plus g of x. The answer is negative 5x plus 3. We're going to go ahead and write a y equals in front of it because it just makes more sense to us when we're graphing it. You would notice, though, like on your homework, they would write it like this because we actually are adding f of x plus g of x together, and that's like the answer for one of your homework problems. Does that make sense? But when we're graphing, it's easiest to just write y equals. Okay, so what type of function is this? Very good. It ends up being a linear function. And how do I know that this is a linear function? Yeah, good. There's no exponents. There are no, um, there's just an x and a y. So anytime you just have plain x's and plain y's like that, it's going to be linear. All right. So what would be my starting point for this linear function? So is there anything in parentheses with the x? So that means the x value for my starting point would be? zero, and then my y starting point would be three. Everybody okay there? Okay, so zero up three and we make a point. Now, once you have your starting point, you can make a choice now, okay? Your choice is, do you want to just use the slope and graph using the slope, or do you want to plug in another point to see what's happening? So. How many of you would prefer to use the slope? How many of you would prefer to make use a point? Plug in and find a point. Okay, and so some of you have no opinion. Most of you voted for slope. So what is my slope here? Negative five over one, good. Because if you have a whole number there in front, remember slope is always rise over run. So you always need two values, okay? And so if you just have a whole number of negative five, you may get a fraction by putting it over one. Okay, so at my starting point, we're going to go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then positive 1, right 1. And then you can draw your line. It's always 
a good idea to kind of double check your answer. And one way for double checking that you did the graph correctly is that your slope is negative. So when you read this line, you start from the left, go to the right, and do you see how from the left to the right it's going down? So you know that it is a negative line, so hopefully you did it right, okay? <coughs> Any questions there? You guys ready for the next one? Okay, so on this one, it says find and simplify f of x minus g of x and then to sketch that function. So f of x minus g of x, we're gonna write this out and we have two parentheses x minus one squared plus seven and then minus. Now because we have a minus sign, if this had more than just one number, we would want to put it in parentheses because that minus would have to distribute to everything. Okay? In this case, and I'll just kind of show you, I'm just going to put it in parentheses for, normally whatever g of x was, we would have to take that negative and distribute it through. In this case, there's only one term, so it's just minus 4. Okay. So we're going to simplify. Do you think I should multiply this out? So if you think about how we're graphing functions and stuff, what type, if you're looking at this right now, if I multiply this out, am I going to be able to simplify or add anything together? No. So sometimes we have to distribute and simplify that way, but sometimes it makes more sense to leave it like this. And the reason why this one makes more sense to leave it like this is because there are no plain x terms or anything over here where I'd add them and make it like a better <coughs> equation, okay? So we know that our quadratic equations, our quadratic functions, need a squared term in order to graph them. And so the only thing here that I'm gonna end up simplifying is my seven and negative four. What is seven and negative four? Good, positive three. Could you graph something like this right now? Yes. And so we know that f of x minus g of x equals this, but for drawing or making our equations, we're going to go ahead and just put y equals here in front for now. Do we have any questions? Okay, what is my starting point? And in this case, because this is a quadratic function, and how do I know this is a quadratic function? Good, it has a squared term. What is my vertex for this problem? Positive one with our x, set that equal to zero, we get positive one and the y value is three. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and mark our vertex. We're gonna go right one up, one, two, three. Sometimes I think it's a good idea to highlight our vertex so we can see what's going on. We know with quadratic functions, they're symmetrical. And so if I find one point on one side of the quadratic function, I can go directly across on the other side the same distance. For this one, can I use slope? No, why not? When you're drawing your quadratic functions, is it a straight line or is it curved? It's curved, right? And so, Curved lines don't have slope, okay? Only lines, only straight lines have slope, and so we have to plug in a point. It's always a good idea to choose a point either to the right or to the left of our vertex. So what point should I choose? Which x value? Okay, we can choose two, good. Or we could have chosen zero, but we'll go with two. So we're gonna plug two in for x. So for my point, okay, I am plugging in 2 for x, and I need to find y. So, 2 parentheses, 2 minus 1 squared plus 3. What is 2 minus 1? 1. What is 1 squared? 1. And so we end up with 2 times 1, which is 2, and 2 plus 3 equals 5. So this other point is at 2, 5. So we go right 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
make our point. So if I have a point there, that is one away from the vertex. So I go on the other side, one away. And then we can draw our quadratic function. Bless you. Bless you. Okay, any questions? All right. Next one. This says find f of g of x. Do you guys remember what to do for these problems? Yeah, we're just plugging stuff in, just like I did on the adding and subtracting. So remember, you start with the innermost parenthesis, and that parenthesis is saying g of x. So all that means is we find what does g of x equal? And in this case, what does g of x equal? x plus 3. And so what's happening is we're just substituting in x plus 3 for g of x. How will I rewrite this right now? You're right. I'm just not there yet first. So first we're going to go f and then write x plus 3. Because the only part that I'm substituting in right now is for that g of x. Are we good? So now when this says f plus 3, when you go to the f part, what T was talking about right now, this f equation has just an x there, but I want to plug in x plus 3. So anywhere that I see an x in this equation, instead of writing x, I'm going to end up writing x plus 3. Okay? So we have 4 minus 2, and then it's going to be our parentheses x plus 3 squared because here was that x and instead of writing x we write x plus 3. Are we okay with that? Now when I look at this, this for me it's not really in the correct order. So in order to graph it we should rewrite it. Okay? And when we rewrite it, it's going to be in that descending order where we have that parenthesis, that term, squared term first, and then the other part after. What you have to be careful with when we're reading, writing this is this negative 2 right here is connected to the parenthesis. Okay? So if it was a positive, then the 2 would be positive. But since it's a minus, it's a negative 2 that's in front. So negative 2, parentheses, x plus 3 squared. And then at the end, I would end up writing what? Plus 4. Good. Because that is a positive 4. Are we good? Okay, what is my vertex? Negative 3, 4 is correct. Good. Set that equal to 0. And then there's the 4. So we get negative 1, 2, 3. Up 1, 2, 3, 4. Make our point. What type of equation is this? Or function? <coughs> no. So exponentials will have an x in the exponent. <coughs> this is a quadratic. So are we able to use our slope? No, we can't use the slope because it is a curve. Very good. So we need to pick a point to the right or the left of our vertex. So what would be a good value to choose? Very good. So I'm going to choose the point of negative 2. Okay, so the x will be negative 2 and I need to figure out what the y is. So we do that by plugging in. We have negative 2 parenthesis. x is now going to be substituted with negative 2 plus 3 squared plus 4. What's negative 2 plus 3? 1 and 1 squared is 1. So I have negative 2 times 1 plus 4 and negative 2 plus 4 equals 2. So negative 2 up 1, 2. We make our point. And then from there, we go across that vertex line. We're one away, so we go one away on the other side. We have the other point now. And we can draw our quadratic function. Okay, any questions? No? Yes? I 
this one right here. So are you okay with the are you okay with how we wrote this or no? How I did that? Okay. So back here you're okay with this part right here? Okay. So when you look at it like that way, it's just not written in the correct form. You could leave it like this, but what I did was I just like rearranged it so that it's written on how we normally write our parent functions for quadratic um, functions. And so the, um, the squared part goes first, okay? And because there is a negative two in front of it, that's your A value, you just need to make sure that you write that negative two, that A value in, in front with this. So whatever parenthesis you have, if there is a number in front, that number is like stuck to glue. It's, it's stuck with that parenthesis because it's multiplying it. And so all I did was keep all of this here together and write that first. So that's why this is written first right there. And then you have the four, which is a positive four that's just written at the end. So all I did was just like rearrange it. Is that any better? Okay. All right, any other questions? Some of you look more confused now maybe. Caitlin, are we okay? Yeah, okay. We're good? <laughs>